Freddie, do you have any comment about Baker's comments about Daniel Jones and the Giants, et cetera? No. I don't have any comments. It's, um, I think you probably need to go back and look. And I mean, he's got the, uh, you know, he's got the ability to to decide whatever he wants. But that was during the draft when that was going on. I mean, he's a football fan also, so I don't really have any comment for it. And I'm pretty sure he wouldn't. So uh, it's nothing against Daniel Jones. It's just he was talking. You know. I think the bullseye gets bigger and bigger. Like we don't care. We don't care. All right, it's already on there, so it doesn't matter. We'll be ready to play. I don't know what a bullseye is. I don't know what that is. Does anybody know? Does anybody know what a bullseye is? If they're not trying to beat our ass and we're not trying to beat their ass, I don't know what else you do. Because that's what we're going to try to do. Hopefully they try to do the same. So. Greg Robinson had into his second year with you guys. What have you seen overall with this camp from him? Um, I think he's continuing to try to work to get better. Um, He's had some better days than he has in the, you know, good days, bad days, and he always seems to try to come back and get better the next day. And and uh, even in the midst of the practice, you have some bad reps and good reps, and uh, I think he's going to continue to get better. What you have to understand about Greg, I think he's, what, 26 years old or something like that. So, um, you know, I think he's got a lot of room to grow. Well, some- we don't want him growing too much, though, <laughs> but <laughs> mentally and physically, not weight-wise. Uh, just his understanding and, and visual of uh, different fronts and stuff like that, and knowing what they're going to do to him, uh, to attack him. Um, that's all. Freddie, you know, while well, you guys are doing some teamwork, uh, you know, the specialists working on the side like they normally do. Jamie Gillen was <coughs> teeing up a couple. Just hmm. wondering if he was just messing around or if you guys are maybe thinking about giving him an opportunity to try and uh, play stick a little. With a golf club? Or what? <laughs> he hit a 60-yarder. Did he? Huh. I don't Granted, know. no one was holding it. It was the, the tee, but still, yeah. I mean, that's pretty impressive, I would think. Yeah, it is. So are you going to give him a chance to kick? <laughs> I didn't even know he could kick field goals. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, if he's out there kicking 60 yards, hell yeah, he might get a chance. <laughs> I mean, if you can kick a 60 yard, your ass is going to get a chance. So. Denzel was up here a little earlier and said he's looking forward to uh, trying to get out there and play against Tampa. Uh, is that just him speaking on his own, or do you, uh, you, you would you like to see him out there? No, I'll, we'll let you know on Friday who's playing, but um, I fully expect Denzel to be ready to play. What have you uh, seen from him since he's gone back there in team? How's he looked? Does, does he look like he's you know, back, back to normal? Yeah, he looked very good. Had a very good day yesterday. Um, had a pretty good day today. Um, so, yeah, he looks like he's in pretty good shape right now. His point to us was like he wants to get out there and play because to get his footwork back and, you know, he just loves playing and uh, just to become comfortable. Do you like when a guy's at least pushing for that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm glad he's in that frame of mind. It's going to benefit him well. Have you so. seen any change? I mean, I know I hadn't been out there much, but change in his tackling technique? Um, yeah, you know, on the live periods, I saw him support a couple of support a couple of runs off the edge. But um, you know, uh, I think all that kind of seems to matter when it matters. You know, what's the extent of your hockey knowledge, and how well did you know the Blue Jackets came talking to you? Um, I knew. I mean, the run that they went on was uh, was very impressive, and it really reminded me of the run that we went on in Arizona when we went to the NFC Championship game. It really wasn't really. Didn't know if they were going to do very much once they got into playoffs, and then they just kind of go on a run there. Um, so I was very excited watching it, uh, stuff like that. I used to go watch the Coyotes when I was in Arizona some. Um, I like hockey. Uh, I don't really follow all the rules yet, <laughs> although I, it tends to never matter that I still watch it. Mm-hmm. And I don't really care to learn the rules. I just like the fact that they're, I mean, what they do is impressive now. I mean, have you ever tried to ice skate? I'm not very good. Yeah, I've been on skates. That's why it's so impressive. <laughs> I mean, are you serious what they do? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's unbelievable. Did you watch any of the Blue Jackets games in the playoffs? Oh, yeah, not personally, but on, on television, television every time they were on, yeah. Or I think every time they were on, every time I knew that they were on. Were you, were you a good 
No, 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 no. I'm from Alabama. <laughs> there's no hockey sticks. There's a, a football and a baseball and a basketball, and that's about it. Maybe a track every now and then. But uh, yeah, I'm just talking about ice skating with your family. I mean, exhausted. I'm like done for like two days. Um, and they're out there doing it at speeds, like just making it look easy, you know? So, and then they were telling our guys about, you know, how they make it look easy. It's like, hey, don't give them too much credit. What you guys do, that's something. That's impressive. Did they get to talk to the team at all? No, uh, you know, I think Baker and I talked to, huh. to them and uh, everything. But it was, a, it was good to see them up here, they you know? some good advice about not listening to the expectations just yeah. because they went through the same thing. Yeah. Said so you guys had to kind of have to stay within the team room and. Yeah, and that's part of the. Um, uh, that's part of the whole mindset, you know. I think these guys have, these guys are a little bit different mindset now than they were, um, what in February or March or whenever this. I'm not worried about our team. Mm -hmm. Our team's going to block out the noise, um, and whoever creates the noise, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I meant by like, mm -hmm. if you guys create the noise, they're going to block it out. If GQ creates the noise, they're going to block it out. If uh, Sports Illustrated. They're going to block it out. I have total confidence that they'll block out the noise. And then it's going to go back to your point where we're worried about the opponent. And that's it. We're worrying about tomorrow. We better be worrying about these meetings and this walkthrough tonight. And then we're going to worry about tomorrow. Hey, Freddie, with, with Baker, though, he's going to be himself. And I know that's one of his endearing qualities. But do you worry, though, that he's at some point going to step over the line or he's going to say something that he really regrets? If I ever feel like that, I'll address it at that point. But. Uh, Baker and I have a good relationship. I think Baker knows exactly what he's doing. You guys aren't giving him enough credit that uh, from the standpoint of he's just being, uh, he's 24 years old, okay? He's very mature, but again, he's still 24 years old. He's gonna have things he learns along the way in football and life and everything else. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it matters. At the end of the day, I don't think it matters. You know, somebody says something about the bullseye, Says something about the bullseye. What does that matter? Do we not have a bullseye on us just because we're in the NFL and we're playing on Sundays? We're going to get somebody's best effort? What does that tell you about the team? That's like being like disrespectful for the team you're playing if you don't think you're getting your best effort from them. What are they going to do, set like 10 starters or something? I don't understand that. Um, we're going to give our best effort every week, and I hope that we get theirs, and then we'll see who's best. That's all. And, you know, the expectations that you guys set – doesn't matter about our expectations. Our expectations is just perform the best that we can do. Um, and that changes on a week to week a lot of times. You guys know how the football season goes. So, uh, you know, that's why we're just worried about tomorrow. And then we'll let that take care of itself and get better the next day. And then look up a month from now and see how good we are. They huh? seem to be saying in, in the uh, article that college success and from a win loss perspective correlates to NFL success. Is that an assessment you agree with? I don't even care to talk about it. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. What does that matter? I don't understand. I'm not even going to address anything about that article. It doesn't even matter. I'm only talking about everything that we're doing right now. All right? How about that one? What we're doing right now? Okay. I Is it right now? It's close. Is it right now? Close. <laughs> Odell, have you seen, since he's been here, have you seen any struggles with him making that transition because when we read these articles there's always references to the past and they sent me here to die so I'm curious since he's been here how do you think he's handled it? I will I will address this one time one time only if you guys remember back in the uh, like a long time ago I made a statement I want him physically mentally ready to go all right it wasn't that he couldn't learn the playbook it was I wanted him all in when he came and he's all in. And that's all we need to worry about right now. It doesn't matter what his state of mind was then. The guy was loved in New York. He spent six years in New York. Six, right? Six years in New York. So, I mean, that was his home. So, of course, it's a shock. All right? I know it's a shock. So, I guarantee you, ask him now, and he's not talking about that. So, you know. Time stamp the article and see when it, or the, uh, whatever, the interview, whatever it was. But I mean, you've seen him be all in since. No doubt. 
when he came back, he was all in. Exactly what he promised me he would do. And he's not, I'll trust him. He trusts me. I won't betray him. I don't think he will betray me. Is there any chance he plays Thursday, I mean Friday? Always a chance. <laughs> Um, I can't answer that. I looked when we, when all the guys were coming out, I know we all looked at him as a punter. So, um, but things change, you know, so it may have changed today. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I got to get back up there and see this. I had, hopefully they videoed it. <laughs> I can't confirm either way. I really can't. They're over there doing their routine to get loose and stuff like that. And, uh, I know that I've seen him over there to get his leg loose by swinging it. You know, like when you hit those hole in ones, you <laughs> practice swings, okay? But, um, you know, to get his hips and his leg loose. So, I mean, I don't know if that was the same type thing. I haven't seen the video or anything, so. Yes, Would you Anthony have a comment? out today and uh, talk about the offensive line. Just a question about him. You know, uh, uh, how long did it take you guys to get on the same page? And what kind of quality does he bring to that, uh, that coaching position? Um, He's a tough-minded individual. He's very detail-oriented. Uh, he's, he's very technique-aware and savvy from the standpoint of uh, he thinks it all starts and stops with technique, and I do too. So that's what makes us um, you know, go together pretty well. He's been doing that for a long time. Is he one of the guys you can just get say, go, uh, go do your thing, and I'll check in every now and then? Yeah. What's that now? What was the question? Was there a question? Well, I don't know. Yeah, what kind of confidence oh. does his resume inspire, I guess? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they've, uh, they've had some good. What, I've liked, what I liked what he did at uh, Green Bay is, you know, he made the average players play a little better, and he made the good players pro bowlers or whatever. You know, he upped their ability level by the way he coached them, the technique-wise. All this is in technique and blocking and tackling. It's all technique. Everybody likes to look at the physical traits. Those are all fun to look at. I've got some statements that, or comments about that on the side. I just can't say it on air. But everybody likes to see that. Nobody likes to talk about the technique, you know? And that's where the games are won and lost. Uh, Campin also said that uh, hopefully it's very apparent that you guys will know who that starting right guard is after Friday's game. Are you optimistic you can get your answer in Tampa? After um, reviewing the film, of course. Depends on how they play. <laughs> I mean, seriously. If somebody's got, I mean, I told those guys the other day, we've got, um, you know, five practices and two two games. And um, if that's if that's too much pressure for you, uh, then probably you're on the, in the wrong business. But everything we've done is to try to prepare them for that situation try to put pressure on them in the midst of a practice. So um, can someone go from on the team to off the team in five days and two practices? Of course. Can somebody go from off the team to on the team? Of course. So can somebody go from a backup to a starter? Yeah, definitely. Is Miles, Couple more. Is Miles illness anything to be very concerned about? No, it's just, um, no, it's not. It's just, uh, it's, it, I mean, it may be the flu or something. I'm not sure. He was just not feeling real well. It started last night and it carried over to today. We kind of see Gennard every lineup everywhere. He calls himself a hybrid. Um, what, what have you seen from him in this camp? And what, what does that do for a defense when you have a guy like that? Is that in the third person? Does he do that in a? <laughs> he might have. Okay. <laughs> you know, Gennard is a, a guy that can play multiple spots. Um, the number one thing he does well is rush the passer, and he does that off effort and, and the ability to bend and things like that, and which are all characteristics that we like in pass rushers. Um, but he needs to continue to get better as far as his aiming point and stuff like that, and he knows that. Um, but it's good to have a guy that's, that's flexible. It's always um, position flexibility is always huge in this league because you can only carry so many guys to the game, so many guys active. Um, you know, so that's always a good thing. For the record, at the end of practice, the, the official called the um, offside on the D tackle, but then we saw a push up from offense and defense. So, what happened? Well, I got to the bottom of it. Sometimes you've got to dig and get to the bottom of it. And our center fletched the ball a little bit. 
so they had to do it too also.